So, hello everybody and welcome here in this audience and thank you for coming as so many people and hi to all the millions and billions in the different variety of the internets out there. I'm Markus Fallner, I'm happy to have you here. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, that, that's it, that's all I wanted, goodbye. No. <laughs> um, I'm here to present an idea and I am fully aware that this that I am presenting here is the produce of uh, a lot of talking, quite, quite some beer were involved in fact, and uh, quite some ideas are involved and it is, it is nothing that is finished of course, it's just an idea and I am here because we want to hear from you, the OpenSUSE community, what do you think about it? And if you think this is possible, and um, we are tr basically we're trying to make something Im impossible. It's about automating documentation, which is impossible, and you will see that. Um, well, I'm here, I'm, I'm Markus Feinland. Some of you may know me, I guess. And um, with me is, I'll tell you about me, with me is R Richard Heigl from Hallo Welt. And is that me? No, just take it, please. It could, cannot be mine. Um, Richard Heigl is an expert in knowledge management, and in the course of this talk, I will tell you why he is here. I am team lead at SUSE for documentation, thus I am absolutely impartial. I was an open source journalist, and that's why I'm absolutely neutral. I'm some people say I'm a Linux expert. I wouldn't say no, I'm not. I would say no, I'm not. Um, I've been working with Linux since 1994, and I have quite some other maybe interesting stories to tell. I was a con I am a conch diplomat. I'm a priest, a Jed Jedi Knight. I am Enceladus citizen number four, and I own some property on the moon. And my boss says I'm running through doors. So that's what I heard from one of my colleagues recently. Um, I'll. If you want to know more details about either one of these things, just talk to me and ask me about it. And uh, for the non-German speakers, if you feel any emotions involved with this talk, which I think will be inevitable, just, just get some hugs for that. So, I want this thing, as I said, it's a di something for discussion. I, wanna, I want to hear, we want to hear what you think about it. Um, all of these next sentences will be, I, I guess, maybe controversial, more or less. Um, I think open source communities do not write documentation. You can always contradict me, prove the opposite. You think they do? I think, you think I'm right? Thank you, Jürgen. Next one. Developers want to write code, not documentation. I just let this settle. Every open source project needs documentation. It, and documentation cannot be automated. There's always humans who have to write documentation in the end. Though good software should not need documentation, it should be self-explanatory, proper documentation resources are essential to attract new users. It's the, mostly the newbies or the ones who are new to something who need documentation. Tumbleweed is a rolling release. No, yes, it is. <laughs> and it's moving way too fast to be properly documented. Nobody disagrees? Good, seems like I did my homework at least a little. <laughs> Nevertheless, there's a lot of data. We have a lot of information that we are gathering we have data in, the, in this OpenSUSE wiki, we have data in the mailing lists where people discuss and discuss solutions and discuss about good or bad solutions to problems. We have stuff even in the build service. The build service had a, has a lot of information about version numbers and more. We have information in forums, in release notes, in git commands, and uh, in git commits and git comments. And there's, there's, the, inf there's the, the documentation that we, the SUSE documentation team, provide. We develop new forms of documentations, like the SUSE best practices. So, sort of like modern style how-tos for achieving single tasks with SUSE products. So there's a lot of documentation, 
And that's not all, that's just, what I just, this was pointed out here is just a little bit, a little tiny bit of the documentation that is around in OpenSUSE and in SUSE, and there's even more with some other projects somewhere out there, anywhere. There's still even more stuff somewhere in other forums outside. So, so what? This, I, this picture is hanging over here. I thought it was in the other room, so I put this picture here. It says, this wall painting, it says, if what you say is true, the Shaolin and Kogan could be dangerous. And I think this is, this is, pretty, this is pretty much what's happening here. We have, some, we have five facts. And I think it's, there is a solution, there may be a solution to it. Community and documentation, documentation are a difficult couple. Oops. Wrong. Why did it jump over? We have a lot of information in, in a lot of places. I took this picture last week on a longer holiday trip to northern Germany. It's a beautiful beach, it's called the Amber Beach. And if you dig a little bit in the, on the beach, you'll find, you find quite some, some worthy stones, some gems. And, it's, and that's what it's all about. It's about finding and presenting it. We have lots of information, but we, are, we fail in finding and presenting it. And, I, and now we come to the last, one, the, the last fact, or the, the one before last fact. Tumbleweed is changing faster than anybody can document. Oh, really? I don't believe that. We can do better because nothing is written in stone. That's why I want to introduce the idea of OpenDoc. OpenDoc is just the name that I thought about for this project because I think it just fits. And it's sort of, for, the, for, those about, for those among you who know about quantum mechanics, they will understand what this means. It's making the sort of the impossible possible. And therefore you have to split your mind and go, split your mind and go in both ways. It's easy. Once you, if you've done it once, it's easy. <laughs> think of OpenQA. OpenQA is a success story, and it was invented some years ago to automate a tedious, unwanted task. task. And that was basically the idea, the role model for what happened in a knowledge management workshop by this Mr. Heigl here. When we were sitting together at SUSE earlier this year, we talked and we had an idea. What if, what if we could just use the concepts that are in, in, in OpenQA in, in a way to help gathering, collecting the input for documentation automatically, because when you write documentation, you, have, you always have to look for the stuff that needs to be documented. You have to spot the stuff that needs to be documented, and you, you have to find the, the content. And that's what the problem that we have. We have a lot of data, but nobody knows where it is and that it is there. And, and um, So what if you could use automated triggers to collect this information, the changes, the news on tumbleweed, that automatically refine them and paste them into a modern, dynamic, somewhat semantic portal. It's not about a new tool. And I say that because at SUSE we are very good in tool debates, or in OpenSUSE also, I think. And we are, it's good to question everything, but what I think of is OpenDoc is, a, is a pre, just a presentation layer for many other tools. It's, it should be open. It should include an indexing waiting search engine with crawlers that search no matter what helpful new website OpenSUSE, SUSE, or this tiny little project somewhere would come up with. So you, like a modern search engine, you just throw in another URL and do some uh, search engine language ma magic to, to weight it and have it presented. On top of this crawler that crawls websites, you could have triggers that, are, that act like, like agents and tell the portal, hey, I've got something. Here is something that fits into your criteria. 
that might be interesting. And this will be, the agents would tell that to the portal. The portal itself shows a list. I put this list in inverted commas because you will understand after, in, in about 20 minutes, you will know why I put this in inverted commas, because this list is not a list, it's not a list, it's not a list, it's not a list. Um, but let's just talk about it as a list. It shows a list of recent changes, problems, questions asked, or topics highly discussed, or relevant, or whatever. And as I said, this list is not a list, it's not a list. And this is a long uh, slide. I hope you still understand it. I'm sure you do. It's semantics, it's weighted, it's a presentation. For example, like, like tag clouds, some of you may, fami may be familiar with that. This is a list. This is sort of a list, but it's a weighted list because in this list, the term web 2.0 has been searched or read or commented or disapproved in, in a way more than the other terms. So this is a weighted list, I, I would call it. I may be wrong, but it's just my my um, naming of it to make it understandable what I think of. Um, but we also have colorful tables um, that compare, for example, one project with the other in terms of, a, in terms of, of um, for example, how many mailing list forum discussions, how long were they, how, uh, how old are the versions, how many how, uh, errors, mistakes are in there, whatever. So that, that there would be um, a comparison, an easy visual comparison, for example, as we have in WebLate. Some of you may know, because I think there's also a talk about WebLate here. And WebLate is a tool that has an, a, a website, a dashboard, and you, with one view, you can see that the, where, document, where translation work needs to be done. For example, we have a... Kiwi is 51% uh, translated. You have a different categories with green and red and un not done. So with one view, you can see things very much easier and faster than in a real list with numbers and whatever. So this is all, but this is also a list, but it has some visual component in it. And the best thing is the information is already there. We have the information. So, What's a trigger? A trigger could be, as I said, an agent that feeds data into an open doc. It could be any agent. Like, for example, um, when you have our, one of our mailing lists, you have this mailing list and there's a discussion going on about the latest version of System D or whatever, and uh, you have 200 comments, but it's only two people discussing. Ah, I would say it needs at least, um, the topic is interesting, how many people are involved, how, how long is the thread. You could define a trigger that automatically puts an item on the open doc portal if one of these threads gets long enough and if some relevant people that are known as not being trolls or bots are involved. And that could trigger an entry on the portal, for example. Same applies to forums. Or you could be the standard email from OBS, from Open Build Service, telling you about the updates that they have done this week in Tumbleweed. But it could also be a hashtag in a commit comment. If you commit, if you do git, com git commit, um, just add a hashtag or whatever to your command and that would trigger an entry on the open doc portal. Um, it could be a keyword in the release notes. It could be a special topic or a keyword in mailing list or the forum threads that you have been searching for. It could be predefined entities and documentation, whatever. It could also be external, like a daemon monitoring social networks discussions about a topic. For example, if you're a release manager and there's a discussion, go discussion going on because your latest version of your software was really messy and there were lots of mistakes inside, you would, you would want to be informed automatically about it. So that's what an agent like that could do. And what, we can, what can we get out of this, all of this data collected and then aggregated into one portal? Well, something sweet and nice and tasty, I hope. <laughs> Imagine an automatic and human distillery refining all this information. I have a screenshot here and I think you, Richard, will also talk about Stack Overflow later a little bit. If you know Stack Overflow, you probably already know what I'm talking about. Now, Stack Overflow also presents data in lists, but 
you can you can tag, you can vote, you can um, uh, have the list, have individual views on the list, and lots of information is been and uh, information is entered by humans here, but you can it's it's. If you click on hot, you'll have a different list or a different sorting of the same results that are in the system. And by just clicking uh, one to five stars or did that help, whatever, the, the data gets more um, helpful to others. So this list should allow and should encourage users to, to rate, to mark, maybe to kick some topic as not relevant or outdated or even to tag as, as, as hot or whatever. You could also create relations like this is related to, to virtualization or whatever. Um, as with Stack Overflow or similar, the stuff that is rated higher will be presented more often. Not relevant stuff should go down the list. In this way, um, and, oh no, sorry, different <laughs> sentence. Um, that also means um, you could have individual preferences, individual an individual approach with your own login or whatever to this portal where you could set different types of lists because you are a user, a developer, release manager, package maintainer, or whatever. You may have like a, your own personalized dashboard. And these criteria that you use could like define relevance for single users, for you, because you might be different. Different in a way, some movie fans will have recognized, like the good, the bad, the ugly. The release managers or developers could use OpenDoc in, or, the, or such a dashboard to find out what's wrong, working, good, bad, ugly about their own project. Individual dashboards, I've already, I've already said that. It could also be live tracking of development if OBS or if triggers uh, uh, deliver constantly, del constantly deliver data. And it could also be used for analytics, like the comparison of projects or tasks, like WebLate. Web we have lots of this stuff. We have lots of the, we have all the data. We also have some websites like that. What I'm talking about is sort of an aggregation, no, a portal that aggregates, aggregate that. And at this point, we were talking about, well, how could, we, how could this technically work? What could be used as basis for such a portal to fulfill those needs that I talked about? And that is where the knowledge management expert came in. And, and at this point, I just give, give on, uh, pass the microphone on to, to, to Richard because he can tell us and give us some examples about how the wiki world might help us in that. Hi there. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. Um, so my part in this talk is uh, that I share a few experiences we have made in the wiki world uh, of the last 10 years because we have seen that there is not only a community, there, is, there are thousands of information, there is knowledge sharing, uh, you have unbelievable many sources. And how can we cope with that? And um, some people would say, okay, uh, yeah, wiki is something, um, it's like Wikipedia, it's a bit, a bit old fashioned. And uh, I don't think so. Uh, wiki is a is, uh, has principles and has shown many ways how we can co uh, collaboratively share knowledge and aggregate knowledge and, and bring people together and bring some structure in this whole process. So what I do, do, will do now in this uh, talk are two things. First, I will give you such a few ideas um, how we can start the process to improve the documentation and how we can automate it. And the second thing is I would show you three <laughs> um, websites 
um, where you can give have some ideas what what's possible, and uh, this is for the next discussion. I think could be very interesting. So, always if it comes to organize, start a knowledge platform. Doesn't matter what it is for what it is. You have to um, do a few things. The first thing is. You have to answer the question, how do we retrieve knowledge? Um, how do we, can you find knowledge uh, today? So um, Marcus already said, yes, we need a proper search. That's always the basis. Uh, we have many guys out there uh, thinking that a search is everything. A search can do everything. A search can do a lot. And yes, it's true. Uh, and I'll show you a few examples that a semantic search and good filters will help us a lot to do that. It's not about, again, it's not about tools today, but this is the experiences we made and, this experience and the way we are going and heading to, to today. Uh, even Wikipedia and Wikipedia uh, communities around um, the world. Uh, what is semantic? Maybe it's just for a few people who don't know what it is. Um, semantic is a, <laughs> a funny word for something very easy. You learn how to work with metadata, structured data, like uh, or the author of an article, um, expiry dates, um, a build numbers, or whatever. And uh, normally, you have all these informations in a, in in content somewhere hidden, and that a search can use it. Uh, you must, must uh, set a markup and say, this is a date and this is an author. And then you can do really great things with that. Another thing I want to mention and really want to emphasize is that if it comes to knowledge, you need unique IDs. <laughs> um, Wikipedia offers only one article per topic and works with redirects, and that for very, very, very good reasons. So if, if you show um, see Stack Overflow, then you can start any topic you want to. Oh, this is Richard's library. I want to talk about the library of Richie, Richard's library page and something on. You find five places or ten places discussing the same stuff, documenting the same stuff, and in Wikipedia, you are forced, the people are forced to use one page and one article to talk about. And because uh, human beings are not so really good in uh, memorizing numbers and data, it's normally it's the norm, an article, an article title. <clears throat> and this is something we have to head for, that one thing, if you have some information, some knowledge, you should attribute, you should attach it to one point, and then you can start, and you will find things much better, and your search will find, find it much easier. The next thing is, okay, how will we collect knowledge? And now you see, um, you can make it on your own, you have ordinary authors, but you can do a lot of uh, uh, these uh, things together with your tools, uh, you can, automate it. So um, Marcus said already, okay, let's define some triggers. Somewhere out there, there is an, an important information. This information will come to the new OpenDoc platform and will make a new post. Ah, hi, here has something changed. Uh, maybe for somebody is this interesting. <clears throat> um, other things, um, engines, can do much better than human beings um, normally is changing metadata. Oh, that's a new release number. <laughs> so you don't have to change that in many ways. And on, on many platforms, do it once or let it do it your, your platform. Um, next thing is now you need human beings <laughs> for classification. It's always the same. Um, you can say, okay, this information belongs to another article. Um, you can map it. You can say, okay, there is something similar. There are dependencies. Um, there are other uh, topics. And, and you can rate these information. You can say this has a high quality or is an important change for us, and other people should see it. 
And things you can do, maybe um, a bot can do, but normally ordinary people do it, um, enrich your content, add some screenshots, diagrams, videos, attachment, whatever. So OpenDoc can collect all these things, uh, but it also should uh, make some proposals for us to do. And so it can tell us, hey, there are links missing, there are orphaned and expired posts, um, old and not confirmed pages. That's what they do at Wikipedia. Old and not confirmed pages is a very important thing to, to make the quality assurance um, in, in Wikipedia and Wikipedia similar uh, platforms. References, sources, I, I will hurry up with that. And you, the other thing is, okay, you want to be stay informed, so an ordinary thing is, or what, which is common, is you can follow a topic, you can, come, you can follow a category, and you have your own stream, you have your own task list, all these things you, is, is very common. But this should be brought together in, an, uh, in, a, in a plan, and in, you have different ways to work with, but you should put the right ones. This is the question we uh, have to answer now. Um, Last thing, Wikipedia adheres to its versioning system. That's often forgotten. It's very, very, very important that you have uh, control over what has changed. Even if the bot has changed it or your neighbor, it doesn't matter. You have to see what has changed and maybe you must make some rollbacks to that. <clears throat> so, and last one is um, obviously you must have find ways to archive, you must uh, have ways to delete information and knowledge. Uh, that's, that are things most people don't see at Wikipedia, but it happens every day. They have a huge process for deleting information, uh, not only deletion um, uh, discussions, but uh, also automatic forms for um, get rid of outdated information. So a few examples, that's the second part. Um, we talked about already about Stack Overflow, so I don't want to get too deep into that. I show you three other platforms, something <laughs> really interesting. One is ShiftLog, that's a, um, a customer's project. We realized this year, and I will show you a bit about streaming, about attributions, filters, and semantic. Friseur Spezial is, about, is a hairdresser platform. Quite funny. Um, I love it because of the search there. And Translate Wiki is a translation platform for um, the Wiki communities and for open source uh, software projects. And they can show us a bit about task lists. Oh, there it is. Okay. I, yes. Um, unfortunately, this is German because it's for a German company. Um, the story behind that is there's is a huge amount of they have to document um, a plant somewhere here in Germany, and they have people who are responsible to maintain the plant, and um, they need a, a book or they have they need a list. What should we? Uh, what have we done? What is to improve? Um, we have some uh, messages, and uh, the the thing is. Shift book, it's a shift book. So what you see now, this is uh, actually, this is a media wiki on, in basis. It has just a different view and uh, another skin. And you see, okay, there are messages from people. Somebody has changed something anywhere. And it doesn't depend if this uh, message is made by a human being or, or by, um, by a bot or so, uh, it's just about how it works. And what I want to show you, oh, it's a bit complicated. So let this be, for instance, an article about oh, um, a library, some Linux library, and then you have a description what it is. This is still a wiki text, but you can enrich this with metadata, what it is. It has a number, um, an ID, um, something else, and you have messages 
to that build, for instance. So what we have seen at the last page, you see, okay, you can attribute, you can attach this to that. And for instance, I show you why, why, why semantic. If you are working with semantic, then you mostly, or, or you, you offer your authors, you make it much easier for them to edit something because you say, okay, you have here a free text field, but you have also, uh, if, if you want to add some data or, or um, other stuff, then people, people should, shouldn't think about how to, uh, how, how um, the, the logic is behind that. You can do it, um, make it most automatically. So anyway, so you, so now you produce metadata and text and everything, and that makes it possible that you can get some reports. So you can say, okay, give me all messages where something went wrong or or use or um, maintenance uh, reports or so. So now let's transform transform this into the problem we have in an open docs system, it's the same thing. It's a completely same thing. You have an article about uh, a package, and then you have messages around that. You have discussions about it. You have maybe some uh, posts made by um, the Git hub or somewhere else, and you want to attach this to that topic you're talking about. And this will make it, make it much easier to find for people who are working with that, developers and others, people from the doc team, people from the community, what is going on on this topic? And you make it, make it much easier for the search to find it because you follow the wiki way. Um, you have always an, one unique idea. You, you know what the name of your problem is, and then you find everything around. Another thing is... Um, no, as the same window, it's um, okay. This is a hairdresser special page. Um, <laughs> this is also a media wiki. But in there, you can search for something. Uh, a typical question for hairdresser is what is about scissors? And then you get some results. You see here, these are ordinary articles about scissors. And this is, for instance, these are links. These are sources somewhere out in the web. In the web. Um, if I would jump to that, then I come to another website. And this website has different categories or tags. And we can, an idea behind this platform is to, um, to rate this information that you can see, okay, this article has a high, is, is high, has a high quality or is, um, especially for, uh, has, had, has good images or videos or is, is something commercial or I don't know. Again, it's just about the principle. The principle is you, you have a great, nice search and everything you do, you combine it with good content. And you work in an intelligent way in combining categories, free text, search, and uh, you will find everything very, very quick. You see, it's, it's a really it's quick solution. Yes. And a third one. Ha, ah, no, unfortunately we need this one. Okay, Translate Wiki is an open source translation community, and it works like this. Um, I don't know what to do today, or uh, maybe I can sh translate something for an open source community project. So I go to Translate Wiki, and there are um, several projects, and it's the same like the translation tool you showed us um, before. Um, you see, no, what's the last? Started. Auto for English, proofread. 
Ja, schauen wir mal da. Ah, sorry, doesn't work. Okay. I let this. It's about you, you go to your, your page and you see, okay, there are 10, 20 tasks I can do. I, I have several translations. I, I open it, make the translation, post it, and everything is fine. So um, I can work as long as I want. And um, every, every uh, little thing I do will improve the documentation. So what they do is everything you have to do for this documentation or improving uh, the translation is are very small steps. A very small packages, no no workload. You just control and say, okay, this is fine, this is not fine, and I can do it better. And this is the way I think we should go to, is that we um, make small packages, and you can say, oh, is this page outdated? Yes or not? Does it have a screenshot? Yes or not? Um, do you know better sources? Is this discussion really important? And then you get a great, it's a really, really, really great documentation, I can promise you. And what we have already at this moment, it's not a technical thing. It's a question about people and the content. Uh, our experience is if you start uh, any web platform, it's always about people and what content you really need. Because there's a huge amount. But in the end, you need at least 10%. 10% are this what you're re really, really looking for, and the others are interesting, but hmm. So, for a success story, you need these 10%, and this is what we are discussing today. What is necessary, and if you know what is necessary, um, then you can, you, you can organize this very quickly. So I give back to Markus Feiner. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Okay, and I close the presentation. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to close this. So, what we are going to do, or this is all, as I said, this is all up to now. Ideas. We. I want to put this for discussion. So this is for general discussion. The um, the documentation team has. Will, will provide one person's work for one day per week to help as a, as a gardener inside this, if there is something like an open dock uh, portal one day. I added it as, as an, as an hacking, Hack Week project for next week. And uh, now here is my presentation again. Let me just see. Can I, yeah, I can jump to the one letter one. Um, I would like to carry on this discussing, discussing the whole thing. So, because knowledge sharing is not, a, not only a question of technology, it's also a question of people and content. So as we have seen, there are many ways where we can get the content from somewhat or semi-automated systems, but we also need people who do that. And we need, we need to know if, if this is wanted and if it is feasible for us at all. And therefore, as I men already mentioned, we have, something, we have something in mind like the gardener, which I am already say to, that I have the permission to devote one guy, one person of my team for one day a week, some hours of week, some hours of work, to refine the results of the triggers. Hopefully, the community would have uh, helped before that by rating, marking, tagging, whatever. But he would work in that because I think that's necessary, separating the weeds from the good, from the flowers. 
Um, we already started to work on the OpenSUSE documentation. So Christoph, I think he's not... Yeah, he's here he is. He already started working in the wiki. We have some administrative tasks like moving the wiki, updating, upgrading it, and making it a, a starting place for, for documentation, for OpenSUSE documentation. We are working on that. It's already, that is already work in progress. And, uh, uh, we, but I want to go on, I want to move on with this. I want you, the OpenSUSE community, to tell me if this is something that, that, that is good or that is bad. I want to, 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 to give this open doc thing for discussion, to put it for discussion for you. And so next week is Hack Week, and therefore I added this as a Hack Week project. It's the project 1514. And I hereby invite you to join me, us, for that. And that's why now I'm open for discussions. We have a little more time because the next, I, I know the next speaker quite well. And he promised that he wouldn't start before I leave the stage. And so if you have any questions, if you, if you want to tell me that this is total bullshit that I just talked, which I don't think will happen because I had an expert here. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <laughs> so, any questions? Was it that much input? Or was it that stupid? Or both? Needs to settle, huh? So the next the next steps would involve, like I said, the the Hack Week project or the Hack Week maybe discussions next week. Question? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> also waiting. The next step would involve the Hack Week next week. This some with discussions and finding out if there is interest in the community in this project. And then we will see. I, I hope that we can start something and make something here and have some nice summer months working on that. Sort of maybe something like a summer of documents with having something that we can present at the, at the SUSICON in, in, in November, whatever. OK. You've had your chance to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.